breaking 80 is something every golfer wants. There's something so much better about shooting 79 versus an 80, 81, or 82. And when you finish this video, you're gonna learn seven tips to help you break 80 without changing your swing. Hey, my name is Michael Leonard. I'm a plus two handicap and the creator of Wicked Smart Golf. My most popular video so far is seven tips to break 80 without changing your swing. So I wanted to do part two today to help you give even more strategy. Because here's the thing, breaking 80 doesn't happen just from creating a perfect swing. In fact, there is no perfect swing. No matter how good you get, you are always gonna be working and tinkering on your golf swing. The good news is there's all kinds of stuff you can do with your short game, mental game, and course management skills to help you break 80 consistently, even on your bad days. It's all about learning how to master your mind and navigate the golf course so that way even when your ball striking isn't there, you can still shoot in the 70s. Let's get into it. The first tip to help you break 80 without swing changes is to get a putting routine. So many golfers have a routine for their full shots and then when it comes to the short game, they completely neglect it. This is why so many golfers struggle on the greens. They have doubt, they have fear, they're negative, they're worried about missing, and they're not thinking about making the putt. So one of the things you wanna do immediately, if you don't already, is create a putting routine. A good putting routine is simple. The whole goal is just to make sure you have confidence over the golf ball. And confidence comes from knowing which way you think the putt's gonna break and having a good start line. The problem is so many golfers get over a putt and they don't really know, is it right, is it left, is it uphill, is it downhill? And then they're left with a lot of doubt and fear and indecision. And whenever you're doubting yourself over the putt, most of the time you're gonna end up short because you're just trying to guide it down there and you're not focused on creating a great putting stroke. When it comes to creating a putting routine, you don't wanna overcomplicate things. What I like to do is read the green from behind the golf ball after I mark, then I try and walk up to the hole. I usually pace it off so that way I can tell my mind, hey, this is 10 feet, 15, 20 feet. Plus when I track my stats, that information comes in handy as well. And then if I really don't know what the putt's gonna do, I will read it from behind the hole as well. But for the most part, I only read that when I'm really confused and I don't really know is it right, is it left, is it uphill, or is it downhill. I don't recommend reading the putt from behind the hole and from behind the ball every single time because a lot of times you might see a different break or see less or more break and it might just actually lead to more doubt and worry over the putt. From there, what I like to use is something called the look and shoot putting method. This putting system has transformed my game and really changed my entire pre-shot routine. What's great about this system is that it teaches you how to keep your conscious mind busy so you can go unconscious on the green. The look and shoot putting system is by far my favorite putting system and I encourage you to take a look by clicking the link down in the description. The final tip I have when it comes to creating a putting routine is make sure you're not standing over the golf ball too long. The European Tour did a study and they found that the less time over the golf ball, the better the shot. So again, if you're standing over at eight, 10, 12 seconds, you're letting so much doubt and negativity creep in, you're never gonna putt your best. Speed up your routine, it will transform your game. The second tip to help you break 80 is to learn your mental golf type. Here's the thing, sports psychology is very broad and honestly not catered to individuals. And that's one of the biggest reasons you can read a sports psychology book and not have any improvement in your game. The reason is, is because there's 16 different types of personalities out there. Each one of us is hardwired at birth with one of these, and we have to learn that style so that way we can play like that on the golf course. Mental golf type is the number one mental game system that will transform your game because it teaches you how to play golf based on your unique personality. To start 2023, I actually just became a mental golf certified coach because I believe in this system so much. When I started applying it, I started hitting more fairways, more greens, less putts, and just lower score. I fully believe in this system and know that it can transform your game because it teaches you how to get in the zone and stay out of stress. Whether you're an extrovert like Phil Mickelson or an introvert like Tiger Woods, you need to play golf based on your personality type. It's gonna have a huge impact on your ability to score every single round. You can actually take your free self-assessment by clicking the description down below and going through and figuring out your mental golf type. Tip number three is to aim for the middle of the green more often. Unless you're inside 100 yards, I would challenge you to never aim at the flag unless it's in the middle of the green. When you actually study the PGA Tour averages, you'll realize that they actually don't hit it that close from the fairway and even farther from the rough. Whether they're 120 or 160 yards, they're not aiming at the flag that often because they know percentages. For example, the average PGA Tour player's approximate distance when they do hit the green is close to 30 feet. This means that they're either hitting shots way offline if they're aiming at the flag or they're not aiming at the flag that often. Here's the thing. If you're not a professional golfer, you really shouldn't be aiming at the flag that often unless it's in the middle of the green. Because anytime you're going at the flag, you are risking short-sighting yourself. 
And the problem is when you short side yourself, you're not only gonna make it hard to get up and down, you're gonna invite double bogeys into the round, which not only kill your score, but kill your momentum as well. So the thing is, the farther away you get from the hole, the more you wanna aim for the fat part of the green. Even as a plus two golfer, I rarely attack flags if I don't have a wedge in hand, because I just know there is a shot dispersion pattern. No matter how good you get, you're still gonna have a big shot dispersion. And if you're aiming at the flag and then you're missing it right, you're missing it left, you're gonna invite those short-sided misses. They're gonna be really hard to get up and down and you're just gonna waste shots. So quit playing overly aggressive, especially from outside 150 yards. It will transform your game because you're gonna get on the green more often, you're gonna have more looks at birdie and you're gonna make more putts. Plus, even if you don't make a lot more putts, you're not gonna invite those bogeys and doubles into your round. When you aim for the middle of the green more often, everything's gonna change. Tip number four is to record your putting stroke regularly. Now, figuring out your full swing takes a lot of work. It's hard even for me as a really solid golfer. I struggle sometimes identifying issues in my swing, my grip, my takeaway. But with putting, you can figure out and quickly self-diagnose issues fast. Don't forget, 30 to 40% of all shots happen with your flat stick. So you wanna be able to fix that quickly. Because if you're having 35 or 40 putts around, it is gonna be nearly impossible to break 80 consistent. So record your stroke behind the line. This is a good way to see your eye alignment, your shoulder alignment, and your posture. And then record your swing from face on. That way you can see ball position and how the ball starts rolling once it hits the face. And for extra credit, make sure to lay your phone down on the green to see what happens when the ball hits off the face. Because if it's skipping, it's gonna be really hard to actually make a lot of putts because it's gonna get offline quickly. So this could be a loft issue, this could be a, a setup issue, but you can actually feel figure that out using your smartphone. So record your stroke regularly so you can quickly fix any issues. If you're going through a golf slump, a lot of times it's your flat stick holding you back. And when your putter's on, it makes it easier to swing with confidence and chip better because you know your putter's there to back you up. So if you wanna start breaking 80 regularly, become your own golf coach when it comes to putting. Tip number five is to track your stats regularly. Here's the thing, if you wanna change anything, you need to measure what you can. If you're trying to lose weight, you wanna obviously track what exercises you're doing, track what you're eating every day so you can figure out calories in, calories out. The same thing goes with golf. You wanna track your stats so you can figure out where your weaknesses are and then work on those in practice. The problem is most golfers have no idea statistically what they're doing wrong. Then they go to the range and they repeat the cycle over and over again. So instead, track your stats after the round. At least figure out fairways, greens, scrambling percentage, and number of putts. That's a very basic way to go about it, but I encourage you to actually step it up and use an app like Decade Golf or something similar to track even more. So that way you can figure out driving distances, you can figure out proximity to the pin, in, strokes gained and so much more. Now, if you're not playing tournament golf every single weekend like me, you probably don't need to invest in something like decade golf, but you still wanna get some sort of app so that way you can learn as much as possible about your game. A free app can teach you so much because you'll know what to work on in practice so you actually get better. What I recommend doing is track your stats and then the following week, go through and spend 80% of your practice time on your weaknesses. Maybe that was your driver, maybe that was sand shots, maybe it was putting. It just makes it easy to figure out what you're doing wrong and what's costing you a lot of strokes and not letting you break 80. So that way when you do practice, you're practicing efficiently and not wasting time and money on the driving range. Tip number six to break 80 consistently is to play more golf. Get off the driving range and get on the course. The driving range does not replicate real golf. You're rarely gonna have flat lies, perfect distances, no pressure and hitting shots in a great groove. That's just what practice is. Playing golf is very different. Playing golf, you have to pick targets. You have to worry about playing partner. You have to worry about pace of play. There's gonna be obstacles out there. There's gonna be water, bunker, deep grass to avoid. It's so different than practice. Now you need to practice to get a consistent swing, work on your short game, your putting, don't get me wrong, but you need to take your game to the golf course. So that way you can test your mental game out, test out your pre-shot routine, and again, identify weaknesses so that way when you do practice the following week, you can actually spend time getting better on the things that are holding you back from breaking 80. The final tip to help you break 80 without swing changes is to upgrade your equipment. Your equipment plays a huge role in your ability to go low every single time. Golf is hard enough, but if you're playing shafts that are too heavy or club heads that aren't forgiving enough, you are making golf even harder on yourself. Now, I'm not saying you have to go and spend hundreds of dollars and get a custom club fitting right now, but you really wanna think about three specific things. First, your driver. Your driver should be 100% fitted for you. They're 50 to $100 for a fitting, 
and it's some of the best money you can spend because your driver is gonna be used 10 to 14 times per round on a normal size golf course. So you wanna make sure your driver is fit for you so that way it's not enabling your slice or hitting it too low and it's killing your carry distance. You wanna be able to stand on any tee box with confidence. So again, spend some money on a driver fitting. It will transform your game because you're gonna be able to attack par fours and par fives so much easier. The second thing you wanna do is make sure and get your putter right. I recently just did a putter fitting at PXG and having the right lie angle, the right loft, and the right club head made a huge difference in my performance. So again, this is another $50 to $100 investment that can pay dividends because don't forget, as we've mentioned several times, putting is 30 to 40% of all shots during the round. So like your driver, you wanna make sure your putter gives you tons of confidence on the greens. And the best way to do that is to make sure it's fitted for your unique stroke. The final thing you wanna do with club fitting is make sure your lie angle is right on your irons. With your driver and woods, you can usually adjust them to figure out different lie and loft settings, but irons are fixed. So you need to change your lie angles to make sure it matches your swing. For example, if your clubs are too upright or too flat, you're gonna be missing left or right, when in reality, you just need to change your lie angle maybe one or two degrees in either direction, and it will straighten out your ball flight based on your swing. You don't even need to buy new irons to do this. You can actually just take them to a golf store like the PGA Superstore and have them adjust them real quick and instantly start seeing better changes in your game. So remember, there's a lot of things you can do to start breaking 80, and none of them that I've mentioned in this video or the other one have to do with actually changing your swing. It's about playing the right equipment, practicing efficiently, managing your mental game, and figuring out different course management skills to help you play better golf every single time you tee it up. While you should keep grooving a consistent swing and learning more about your game, just remember these seven strategies can have a massive impact on breaking 80 every single time you tee it up. Let me know your best golf tip to break 80 down in the comments below. Thanks again for watching, and as always, I hope you have an epic day on the links.